The NFL Combine can change someone's perception of you a whole dang lot. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the last one is the perfect one. How about we take a look at six NFL draft prospects whose stocks are rising ahead of the draft and six that are falling. Rising, Ed Garen Cooper, LB, Texas A&M. Heading into the NFL draft, Ed Garen Cooper out of Texas A&M was widely regarded as the top off-ball linebacking prospect. His college career was more than enough for him to stand out among the masses, but after the combine, his stock has risen even higher. Despite having one of the longer frames amongst his position group, which doesn't always lend itself to explosiveness, he ran an impressive 4.51 40-yard dash. Scouts are becoming enchanted with the former Aggie standout, and we are now seeing him climb in the larger ranks outside of his specific position group. Falling, Keon Coleman, WRFSU. There was a time that folks thought Keon Coleman, the young, talented wide receiver out of Florida State, was a definite to be taken in the first round of the draft. But you know, it's now starting to look like that that dream is fading. He is a more physically imposing receiver, weighing in at 213 pounds, and he did manage to post an impressive 38-inch vertical leap. But nevertheless, a 4.61 40-yard dash is not gonna cut it in the eyes of draft scouts. The other issue that has started to worry scouts is the way that the 6'3 wideout gets in and out of his breaks while running routes. That said, this is a very similar profile and sentiment to the narrative that was crafted around DK Metcalf heading into his draft year. And you know, I think that turned out alright. Either way, in the short term, it looks like Coleman's stock is taking a hit, and he may very well end up falling out of the first round. Rising, Jalen Wright, RB, Tennessee. The Tennessee Volunteers have been on the upswing over the past few seasons, and now their former running back, Jalen Wright, seems to be riding that wave as well. The 5'10 and 210-pound running back was fairly productive during his volunteer career, as he tallied 2,297 yards and 18 touchdowns during his three years on campus. NFL executives are quickly becoming more and more enchanted with the talented young running back, largely in part because of his age. He's entering the draft as a 20-year-old and will be 21 for the entirety of his rookie season, meaning that if he can fit into the right system, well, that team could be getting a talented running back with less tread on his tires than many of his peers. If that wasn't enough to get the scouts and player personnel folks excited, he also excited the combine widely regarded as the most athletic running back in the class. He finished second among running backs in the 40-yard dash with a 4.38. Rod jumped to 11 foot 2, which was top amongst backs, and clipped a 38-inch vertical leap, which was good for fourth in his position. Wright also managed to hit 15 miles per hour within his first five yards split to the 40, which is absolutely insane for that short of a distance. Needless to say, there is a plethora of growing excitement around the former Tennessee standout, and we could even see him sneak into the end of the first round, despite all the negative sentiment around taking running backs that high in the draft. Falling, Kool-Aid McKinstry, ZB, Alabama. Former University of Alabama standout corner Kool-Aid McKinstry was one of the top prospects at his position heading into this draft. Unfortunately, disaster struck and he has recently uncovered a Jones fracture in his foot, which is a very non-trivial break. That said, he is still a blue blood prospect. He was Mr. Football in Alabama as a senior in high school and widely regarded as a five-star recruit, something that he more than proved during his time as a member of the Crimson Tide defense. All things considered, he will still likely be among the top two or three cornerbacks taken in this year's draft. But sustaining an injury of that magnitude this close to draft definitely is not doing him any favors, and will have most certainly taken a chunk out of his draft stock. Rising, Brian Thomas Jr., WR, LSU. During his time at LSU, Brian Thompson Jr. found himself often drawing comparisons to a couple of other top wide receivers in the country. You know, guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. and even his own teammate Malik Neighbors. But pundits always seem to favor the latter two. Now that the combine has come and gone, well, the physical freak has really started to pick up some momentum. He ran a blistering fast 4.33 40-yard dash, which was second among all wide receivers. And his 10-yard split was dangerously close to that of Xavier Worthy's, the latest player to set the record for the 40. It was hard for his stock to go much higher after a great collegiate career, which included a 17 touchdown showing in 2023, but well, it's looking like Thomas is now presenting a legitimate threat to Harrison Jr. to be the first wide receiver taken off the board. Falling, Bucky Irving, RB, Oregon. 
There always seems to be a healthy skepticism around skilled players coming out of the University of Oregon. I mean, it isn't exactly clear if it is the result of their traditionally high-flying but not exactly pro-style offensive schemes, or just that they look way fast on the college field running behind massive linemen in their bright green unis. Irving, however, seemed to be bucking that trend, no pun intended, because despite being undersized, he had that Darren Sproles-like burst in agility. Now, unfortunately, his chart has started to zag in the opposite direction after he finished with a 22.8% percentile athletic testing for his size, which unfortunately has really sent him plummeting down the draft boards. Rising, Cooper Beebe, OG, Kansas State. Heading into the 2024 NFL Draft, Cooper Beebe was widely regarded as one of the most versatile offensive line prospects. At 6'4 and 335 pounds, the former Kansas State standout was able to play all over the line, making appearances everywhere but center during his college career. Scouts were also high on his experience, thinking that it would and should quickly translate to success at the NFL level. Well, as the draft continues to approach, Beebe's stock has only climbed higher. He has all the lateral mobility to keep defensive linemen and enough mass and physicality to compete with the monstrous athletes athletes at the NFL level. People seem to have loved what they've seen out of the high-effort player, and we may even end up seeing him climb into the middle of the first round. Falling, N.S. Rakestraw Jr., cornerback, Missouri. During his time at Missouri, N.S. Rakestraw Jr. established himself as one of the better defensive prospects in the nation. But his first-round caliber resume is starting to be called into question. At the Combine, Rakestraw ran a 4.54-second 40-yard dash, and at 5'11", he just doesn't have the length that most of the top modern corners do. The cornerback should, however, still be in the equation once the second day of the draft comes around. It's just hard to envision him going much higher than that with the way that things have trended as of late. Rising, J.J. McCarthy, QB, Michigan. Every year, almost without fail, there is a player, usually a quarterback, who starts to skyrocket just ahead of the NFL draft. In 2024, that appears to be J.J. McCarthy. Scouts loved that he decided to throw at the Combine, since most of the highly touted quarterback prospects generally decline that option. But even better, McCarthy actually threw the ball really well, too, which definitely helps. Beyond the tangible aspects to McCarthy's draft perspective, there also seems to be a narrative building around the national championship winning quarterback. You see, teams love winners. Now, at this point, McCarthy has certainly proven that he can do that. So it's going to be interesting to see where he actually ends up landing, especially now that his stock has shot up so much. Falling, Cameron Kinchins, Safety, Miami. Cameron Kinchins' pre-draft process hasn't quite lived up to his career at the University of Miami. During his Hurricanes career, he finished with 98 tackles, one sack, and two forced fumbles, 26 pass defenses, and five tackles for a loss. Oh, and not to mention 11 interceptions, two of those which were returned for touchdowns. But his weak performance left scouts scratching their heads and put his stock way down. He ran a 4.65 second 40-yard dash, which was in the 18th percentile for his position group. Not exactly the kind of closing speed that you want to see from a safety that you're thinking of investing a high draft pick into. Rising, Bob Means, WR, Pitt. The case of Bob Means is an interesting one. He started his collegiate career at Tennessee playing cornerback before transferring to Louisiana Tech. Then ultimately, Pitt, where he developed into an impressive wide receiver prospect. During his last two seasons at Pitt, Means caught 68 passes and turned them into an impressive 1,122 yards and 8 touchdowns. And he really looked to be hitting his stride down the stretch of the 2023 season, despite very inconsistent quarterback play. He's still largely believed to be a day two pick, but his stock has been rising rapidly as his high aptitude coupled with his relative inexperience is an exciting premise to NFL teams who think that he has a lot of upside. Mel Kuyper even spoke highly of him, saying, I'm intrigued by means. At the combine, he measured in with huge hands, 10 and 1 8 inches, and long arms, 33 and 1 quarter inches. And then he ripped off a 4.43 40-yard dash and a 39 and a half inch vertical. I had around 4 grade on him coming into this week, but I want to go and study the tape. He has tremendous tools, even if he's still raw developing at the position. That's sentiment seems to have resonated with a number of teams around the league too, and we may actually end up seeing the upstart wide receiver getting taken much earlier than the aforementioned fourth round. Falling, Braylon Trice, Edge, Washington. It makes sense that Braylon Trice wanted to enter the NFL draft as his stock was fairly high after the great season that he and Washington had, making it all the way to the national championship game against the University of Michigan. Now obviously, the game did not go how they wanted it to, but Trice still decided to try and capitalize on his momentum and declared for the draft. Unfortunately, Fortunately for Trice, he's entering the draft in a year that is chock-filled with talent at the edge rusher position, and it's one of the more challenging crops of players for him to differentiate himself from. 
Then to make matters even worse, he had a rather disappointing showing at the Combine. He came in weighing 30 less pounds than he did during season, dropping from 275 to 245, but his 40-yard dash came in at 4.72, which was the second worst of his position group. Scouts have definitely started to sour on the former Husky standout, and he'll really need to rely on a team that trusts his tape and think that he fits their defensive scheme. But which NFL draft prospects do you think raised their stock the most? And which ones do you think took the biggest hits? Was there anyone that we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, well, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.